Amtrak Sacella, the perfect train for business people doing business things. But what do business people doing business things need more than anything? Lounges. Well, Amtrak is here to provide, with a lounge at each of the four major stations on the Acela Corridor. There's also apparently an unstaffed lounge in Wilmington, Delaware for sleeper car passengers, but I don't know how that works, we're just gonna pretend it doesn't exist. If you have an Acela first class ticket, you're welcome into the lounges at both your start and end stations. Asterisk. But I know what you're thinking. Which of these Acela lounges is the best? Well, I visited them all in one day to find out. made to DC, it's about 6.35 a.m. Now I think the thesis for this video is going to be that Amtrak's lounges aren't as great as what they expect you to pay for them, but we'll see. Pretty sure DC is the worst one, but I guess we're gonna find out right now. We'll be scoring each lounge from one to five in each of these categories. The aesthetics, the seating, the food, the business center, and the boarding process. Yes. You know what I do. Please ring bell, look at left of the sign. Consumption of outside foods not permitted in the lounge? Why? That's ridiculous. Bell. Okay, I don't know how this works. This turned green when it runs. Okay. So here's the main part of the lounge. It's definitely a little dated in here. There's like two TVs competing for volume. We've got these nice images of DC on the wall here. A little pixelated. You know, the aesthetics aren't amazing, but it's not the worst place to be. Give it two out of five. On the other hand, the seating here is really good. There's this huge diversity of couches, of seats. They have conference rooms you can go into, a ton of power outlets. It's all very comfortable. I think the seating here gets a five out of five. Food, not great. There's like a tiny little basket of snacks, none of which are particularly appetizing to me. I got my enemy. Whatever this like brown poop thing is, <laughs> The drinks, it's kind of nice because they have a little machine that has a couple different sodas, they have little water bottles, but unfortunately the machine that would dispense ice is broken. I love my ice, that is a huge con. Food and drink, two out of five. Of course we have a bathroom review. This is actually pretty nice. Look at these fancy sink things. Whoa, H2O. I would hope that's what's coming out of it. Time for the business center test. We have many different printers going on here. Time starts now. Uh-oh, power, okay, well this isn't good. Okay, it turns out the monitor was unplugged. Which beetle should we do? Let's just start with Paul, I guess. Good picture. Now that is a fun fact. Oh no, is the printer disconnected too? I am deep in the printer settings right now, trying to figure this out. The printer has a feature where you can print out the user's manual. <sighs> just a bunch of links. black and white. Okay, well, fair enough. You do get special access straight to the track, I'm pretty sure. I'm just curious if I open this up. Oh yeah, there's the train. And the person at the front, who was very, very nice, said that there's an usher who like takes you to the train, so that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I'm taking a regional, and that doesn't get me special privileges because of the way the tracks are laid out. For cells and long distance, which are the main trains people would be in here for, you get that direct boarding, so. I think that's worth a four out of five. Train is boarding, time to go. Well, so much for getting a good seat. You know, priority boarding would have been pretty nice. Next stop, Philly. Okay, from the main hall of 30th Street, the lounge is located there. We'll go there now. It's kind of in an odd corner of the station, if we're being honest. There's an elevator here, but we're gonna take the stairs. Please push buzzer. In terms of aesthetics, I think it's definitely a step up from DC. It kind of follows the station architecture a little more. There's more marble. There's a nice view of 30th Street from these big windows. There's only one blaring TV. It's like way on the end, so you can sit in places where it's kind of quiet. But it still kind of has that semi-dated feeling with the seats and whatnot. So I think it's a solid four out of five. One thing that is kind of nice about this TV is that there's a built-in guide. So if you don't like late series office, you can go and change that. In terms of seating, I think this is definitely a downgrade from DC. I think there's less variety of seating and just because 
because of the shape and size of the lounge, there just isn't as much seating, period. So I think the seating gets a three out of five. The food selection is an improvement from DC. First of all, there's a snack that I actually like and that they have pretzels even though it's rolled gold. But there's also just a bigger variety. There's a couple pastries back there. They have some candy bars. And the drinks are better too. The ice dispenser actually works. The coffee machine. You can get a variety of sodas from this machine. They have free water bottles. But you're still not going to get anything more than a light snack. So I think it's a 3 out of 5. Bathroom review. We've got the cool sinks with the three things. I love the three things. And to test out the business center. This computer doesn't have a mouse. So I think we'll try the other one first. Time starts now. Okay. Oh, it's turning on. We're already getting a lot further, a lot faster than we did in DC. We'll do John this time. Here he is watering Cynthia, apparently. Now that is a fun thing. Print. Okay, no color. That's definitely a con. But otherwise, this is looking good. Spoiler alert. It was not good. This feels like a fool's errand here. So it looks like the business center is a bust. The printer on the far end is broken and this computer doesn't have a mouse, so there's not much we can do about that. So I have to give it a one out of five. It's not a zero because you can at least get onto the internet and surf around. We're now on the platform. You might notice that there's no train here. That's because the priority boarding in Philly just means you go down to the platform and then just hang out until the train arrives. All the masses upstairs are also going to board before the train arrives. So it's like, What's the point? It's cool to get a direct elevator down to this track for sure, like that's awesome. But at the end of the day, you get down here and then you just hang around and then you board with everyone else. I can't give it more than a 2 out of 5, but it does get a bonus point for the elevator being cool. says the best lounge. We'll see if they're right. So from the main bit of Moynihan Train Hall here, the lounge is over on the 31st Street side. Here we are. Entry beyond this point for Metropolitan Lounge guests only. Left hand running escalators. Seemingly no buzzers at this lounge, which is nice. Like being able to just like go up, not having to like touch a door and feel like I'm not allowed in. Yeah, this place is amazing. This is Amtrak's newest lounge, and so the aesthetics are impeccable. So modern, everything is so clean. There's a beautiful balcony that overlooks the entire station. This is easily a five out of five in aesthetics. On the one hand, it's too bad there's no control of the TV, but on the other hand, the blaring TV at the other lounges isn't exactly my favorite thing about them. Also, free nails. The seating is also so well thought out. There's so many different kinds of seats. Some have tables, there's ones out in the balcony that are a little more patio style. There's a bunch of couches, there's bench seating, power outlets everywhere. Again, easily a five out of five. We have lockers here of all different sizes, so you can Keep your stuff. There are departure boards right outside the bathroom, which is interesting and funny. I like it. Bathroom review. We've got these floor to ceiling stalls and the three thingies. The three thingies. The food? Oh my gosh. They have a fully stocked cabinet full of sandwiches, bagels you can toast. There's people who just give you food. I got a Santa Fe chicken thing and a toasted bagel with cream cheese and these weird Hell's New York style pretzels, which I'm curious to try. I don't, I've never had that brand before. I mean, this place has everything. You can scoop your own ice for the drinks. You could honestly have a full meal here if you wanted to because everything's free aside from the bar. But there's a bar. I mean, easily a five out of five once again. All right, time to review the business center. Weird seat, not gonna lie. Timer starts now. Okay, here we go. Much bigger and more modern monitor. Also, more recent version of Chrome. Oh, it uses DuckDuckGo, wow. We are doing Ringo. Okay, the picture where Ringo inexplicably looks like Pitbull. Now that is a fun thing. Okay. Wi-Fi is a little slow here, but it's not terrible. So we want it in color, we want it in this printer. Print. If this works instantly, it says printing. Oh, wow. We are under two minutes, people. Did it come out in color? No, black and white. Okay. Four out of five, but pretty darn good. The boarding process, it seems like they announce the track number before anyone else in the station hears it. So you're kind of getting to go down to the entrance to the track before anyone else. I'm not sure if you get to go to the train before anyone else. It's New York, so the trains are sitting there. The priority boarding means something, but I'm curious how that'll manifest when we get on our cell later. Please wait for boarding at track number 12. 
Got 12. Well, it looks like a line is already formed here. So that might be a bus as far as priority boarding goes. It seems like if the train is more on time, you get more priority boarding, you get more of a head start on people, but there's not much of a mechanism for really ensuring that you're gonna get there before everyone else. I think I can only give it two out of five. we have to make an obligatory trip. So from the main hall here at South Station, the lounge is gonna be over here to the left. So you ring the bell. Bam. Welcome to the Boston Lounge. I think that South Station is a profoundly ugly station, except the lounge, which is in the only kind of nice original part. The chairs are a little dated, but it just feels special to be in this really cool part of the station. I gotta go full marks, I think it's a five out of five. It's a pretty big lounge, there's a good amount of seating. Um, you get a good variety, you get some benches, you get some chairs, some couches, some work seats. I would say the drawback is kind of a lack of power outlets. They're there, but you kind of have to look for them. Like I could see if the lounge was busy, people taking up the good seats with power outlets next to them. I think it's only a four out of five. Bathroom review, it's good. I think it's actually probably the least modern of any of the bathrooms we've seen but you know, it's functional. The food here is very depressing. It's a little basket of snacks, none of which I like, and the drinks, aside from water, are locked behind a counter and you have to ask the lounge attendant to get you the drink. That is just so annoying and the food options are really bad. I think I gotta go one out of five. Time starts now. Go. Uh, uh, okay, turning on Gmail. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> Guess someone from DC was here. That is not Gmail though. Let's just do incognito. <laughs> okay, well, there we go. All right, George, that is a <laughs> pretty funny picture. Now that is a photo. Print them out. Okay, got the printer set up. I think color is just not an option. Hey, oh my gosh. Oh, oh no. After the first slide, okay. I'll try doing a little two set thing. Maybe someone had something like printing before and we have to do that first. Hopefully. Hey, okay. That was weird and it's not great quality, but I'll take it. I mean, it was quick. That was a little over two minutes. It's definitely not the peak of modernity, but you know, solid three out of five. All right, boarding process. She just told me that it was boarding on track eight right when she put in that it's boarding on track eight. So I'm gonna be in a big line of people. It's not the best and I'm pretty sure that's what it's like for a sellers too. That's gonna be a one out of five from me, dog. So here are the final scores for each of the Amtrak Acela lounges. And I think the big takeaway I got from this adventure is just that the lounges are not the first class experience that Amtrak purports them to be. From dated interiors to minimal food to forcing the user to play IT to get the printer working, there's just a lot wrong with these lounges. And I know I come from a place of privilege being the guy who's complaining about these first class lounges, but this video mostly serves as a way to advise you that if you do plan on using an Amtrak lounge, just know that it may not be a first class experience per se, unless you're getting on the train in New York. Made it back to Philly, it's 4.26 a.m., I meaning this was about a 24 hour adventure. You ever do something really stupid